and some of them are fiction. And um, very often, they often have very sort of pessimistic things to say about the industry. Ah. Uh, and sometimes going as far as to try and discourage me or the people <laughs> from trying to yeah. make a go of it. Oh. And I, I just wanted to know, you sound like you've got a really great answer yourself uh -huh. and, and, and be able to make your own films and also write um, and get like you know, stay work that way. I was wondering uh, if you could talk a little bit more about maybe some encouraging reasons that somebody yeah. might have to try and <laughs> throw their savings in their life with this very difficult machine. Yeah, yeah. Um, without being blamed for it later. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think I've said that I'm, I'm lucky about four times. I think in general, not just in the movie business, human beings downplay luck. I mean, it's, it's nice for us to think that we're even close to being the masters of our own faith. Um, I think that you just do what you do and you try to do the things you want to do um, and try to do them honestly and really put your work into them. But that doesn't mean even if you make something really nice that anybody's going to notice it. You know? and that, or notice it to the point where you actually make any money back or can make a living out of it or whatever. And so I, I do think that anybody who gets to work in the movie business who wants to is lucky. Uh, there's a lot of other jobs that aren't that much fun to do when you get to do it. Um, I think the great thing about um, you know the movie business, if there really is even a business anymore, is that um, it's very intense while you're doing the thing. And then if you're lucky enough to, to keep doing it, you actually have some periods in between to kind of recover and think about what you want to do next. Um, usually, People spend that time saying, will I ever work again, and being anxious, but, you know, a few people are lucky enough, Robert Redford, um, you know, or George Clooney, to, to you know, well, what will I do this fall? There's six things that I could do. Right. Uh, cinematographers who are good cinematographers, good technicians, who are also storytellers in their way, uh, once they get established, they've got to turn work down left and right. So if there's a way that you feel like I could be a filmmaker and be somebody who does soundtrack work, or cinematography or whatever and develop those skills, it'll take a while to get in, but once you're in and, and you recognize somebody good, you'll keep working. You'll work as much as you want in a year, probably more than you want in a year. As a writer or director, um, too many people want to do that. There's only 52 weeks in the year to show those movies. So, you know, it's, it's incredibly pyramid-shaped, you know, competitive. And at any one time, there's probably only about 15 bankable directors or, or whatever. Now, technologically, movies are easier to make than ever mm -hmm. and cheaper to make than ever. So getting to make a movie is, is easier, much, much easier than when we started out in 1978. Yeah. Um, so to actually do the thing um, is great. But I, as I always say, you know, um, on your second movie, we either have to pay people or get new friends. <laughs> um, sustaining that as a career, um, or even as something you get to do often, is, is really rough. Um, I, I think, you know, for, for me, having also been a novelist, or also being a novelist, um, one of the great things about making movies is the collaboration. You get to work with all these people who have skills that you don't have, talents you don't have. Um, you choose from the array of stuff they offer you within the framework you've given them, and then you get the credit for it. Um, you know, and it's really exciting to work with people who can do these other things that you can't do and see what they're going to come up with. Um, so I recommend it in that way. It's a great thing to get to do. It's a great project to get to do with people. It's not the only one, but movie making, when it's done right, um, can be a really kind of uh, joyful, enlivening thing, just the process of it. Whether the movie ever gets shown or not, but I, but I do think it's just, you know, it, it, you're going into something where um, there, there's just no guarantees. You know, you have to, you have to live with that. You, you know, you just have to live with, you know, I may have to do something else to make a living. How much do I want to do this? If I have kids, you know, how, how many beans can we feed them before I start to feel guilty about this and, and want to take a straighter job, which may not be. You know, those are all just life decisions, you know, and it's your life. And you just have so to... like one of your characters. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but it's, it's you know, for instance, um, uh, Honey Dripper, one of our last movies, uh, Danny Glover plays a guy who's 50-something, 
Uh, he's been a kind of an early New Orleans jazz musician. He's going through the big bands, and all of a sudden, this dude shows up with an electric guitar, and he listens to this music, and he's not sure he likes it. But it's clear that what he does, rhythm and blues, is going to disappear like, like the dinosaur in, in a year. Um, and he's got to decide, do I, can, I, can I swing with this new thing? Do I want to? And, and I certainly can play it because it's easier than what I've been playing before. It's more, it's simpler. But do I want to keep going on and doing it? You know, and, and I think filmmakers and writers, even well-known ones that you, you know the names of, have, have always had those points where they say, is it really worth it trying to write another book? Is it really worth it trying to, to somehow get another film together? 